You can hear the noise. Now, this is a noise you hear sometimes out in the, the trails where you know that chain's in between. It's just not good. All right, welcome back party people. Today we're in the garage with the Bronson and I am going to demystify the derailleur. And I'm gonna do that by talking about the shifter and the derailleur as a pair here. And my attempt is to describe the basic operation in the simplest of terms so that you understand how to effectively use the barrel adjuster on your shift selector to optimize the shifting on your mountain bike. And so in order to do that, you're gonna to have to know just a little bit about how the derailleur works in conjunction with the shifter. A lot of times what I see is, you know, after a rider gets a new bike or a new to them bike, the, the cable will stretch on the shifter and their bike will make those telltale signs of it not shifting optimally, a lot of clicking sounds going on, things like that. So. We're going to try to get to the bottom of that today and help you understand why that occurs and how to effectively optimize the shifting. First, let's talk about some assumptions that I'm going to make on this bike because you need to have a working shifter. And as working, I mean that it is matched to go along with the geared cassette that you have, that it's in good working order, that you have a good working cassette, it's not worn, that your chain is tensioned and linked properly and it is not worn, and also you have a good working derailleur. So here we're gonna pedal along, and right now we're in the smallest cog on our cassette, which is the highest gear. So this is the hardest way to pedal, and I'm going through to go through the motion of clicking the shift selector to actually go down or lower in a gear. And so what happens, as you saw there, as you change to a lower gear on the shifter, the shifter cable shortens and pulls the derailleur inward toward the wheel a fixed amount. And that's why they call it indexed shifting while stretching the spring. And conversely, as we move to a higher gear using the shifter, the shifter cable extends and becomes longer, allowing the spring to compress and pull the derailleur away from the wheel to the next smallest cog on the cassette, again using the ramps on the teeth of the cogs as a mechanical advantage. All right, so that is the simple operation of the shifter mechanism in conjunction with the operation of the derailleur, and that describes how gears are actually changed on your mountain bike. There exists a set of limit screws that we made an assumptions were set properly before. So these are the high and low limit screws along with the B adjustment screw here. So the high limit screw limits the movement of the derailleur away from the wheel such that the chain does not get jammed between the smallest cog on the cassette and the frame of the bike. The low limit screw restricts the derailleur movement toward the wheel, preventing the chain from becoming jammed in the spokes of the wheel. A lot of times you will see on new bikes, there will be a plastic disc, often called the Dort disc, that exists such to prevent uh, someone that uh, may have misadjusted these limit screws, prevents that chain from going into your spokes and perhaps snapping the spoke. So the B limit screw actually adjusts the distance between this upper pulley here called the guide pulley and the largest cog on the cassette. And typically that's somewhere around three to six millimeters per manufacturer's suggestion. When we talk about the guide pulley, we tend to align it with the largest cog to actually do the adjustments. And that will give us the best adjustment across the range of the cassette. So that gives you some basic operation of the shifter in conjunction with how the derailleur actually works to change through the gears in the range of gears that you have on your cassette. So let's talk a little bit about the adjustments that exist. Typically there will be a barrel adjuster up here on the shift selector. There potentially could be an adjustment back here on the derailleur, but um, on most mountain bike derailleurs or most modern mountain bike derailleurs, 
Uh, the adjustment is up here on the shift selector. And so we will be talking about this barrel adjuster here. So oftentimes what happens after you ride the bike, a new bike for a while or a new to you bike, or even if you've replaced the cable, this cable will actually stretch. And as the cable stretches, your shifting becomes uh, less than optimal. So that barrel adjuster is there to actually help you optimize your shifting. And the way the barrel adjuster works is as you turn the barrel adjuster back toward you or clockwise the cable actually gets less tense and as you turn counterclockwise the cable will get tighter and that's how you do those micro adjustments on the shifter cable all right so the idea with the barrel adjuster is actually to make sure that your guide pulley here uh, is centered with the cogs that are on your cassette as you shift through the range of gears that are available on your cassette as you can imagine you have a range on your cassette and you have a range that your derailleur can actually move through now if you over tighten the tension on the cable what will tend to happen is this range now shifts over and so you would most likely if you went to the extreme you most likely wouldn't be able to shift into your highest gear and you would also tend to try to shift into the spokes unless you had the low limit screw set correctly. Now we can actually reproduce it, this and this again is the extreme of having a way over tight cable. So let's do that as an example just to show you what would occur. So barrel adjuster in a quick spin out, two turns and just gonna walk through and notice we already moved up a couple of gears there, so I'm going to try to shift up into our, our largest gear there. It works fine. So as you notice now that this is the actual highest gear that we can get into. So there's actually one more gear on the cassette, our 12th gear there, that we're, that we're not able to actually shift into. And if we were to tighten it more and our low limit screw was not set correctly, the... Uh, the chain would probably tend to slip off in between the lowest cog on this cassette and the spokes and that's not good now i'll walk through that again as we go down so right there we should be in the highest gear on our cassette which we're not we're actually in 11th gear right now so this range of the derailleur is too far off this way and so the derailleur guide wheel is not able to align to the smallest cog on the cassette now vice versa if we go up here to our selector and actually loosen our cable so we'll give this some spins so what we have now is that it won't affect the high gear so it's not going to go further than our limit screw it will get us into the highest gear fine but what we find is is now that the range is is shifted a little bit this way and it's misaligned with the cogs in this cassette we're now going to be able to shift into our lowest gear, which is our biggest cog on the cassette. So immediately we get into our low gear there. And so I'm just going to walk through stepping up the cassette. One thing you'll notice right away that there's usually a very lackadaisical shift going up the cassette when you have the cable tension too loose. You get a, a lot of noise. It's not very crisp continue to climb up the cassette right there the selector the shift selector is out of cable so we should be in our lowest gear which is gear number one but we can only get into gear number two so we really can't take advantage of our lowest lowest eagle gear there and that's because the range here of this derailleur now is shifted this way because we've got such loose cable on it and uh, that it makes that guide pulley misaligned with every cog on that cassette so those are two extremes of what would happen if your cable is too tight and what would happen if your cable is too loose on the extreme side now you probably will never run into this, this scenario unless you do something really really wrong but just know this if you can't get into your low gear then you want to make sure you check that you've got enough tension in your cable and if you can't get into your high gear you want to make sure that your cable is loose enough for that derailleur to 
actually um, return all the way back to the smallest cog on your cassette there. So those are two of the extremes that exist. And we'll just walk through just kind of fixing this right now. If you can't shift into your lowest gear, which is the largest cog on your cassette here, the derailleur needs to come this way. So obviously we need to put tension into the cable to pull this derailleur inward toward the wheel a bit. So I'm just gonna dial in a few turns here counterclockwise and we should see it try to shift. So we got a good shift there already. And a few more turns counterclockwise. I'm just gonna walk through, make sure we're changing okay. We'll make it to our smallest gear we can. Start the shifting, pretty crisp right there. A little bit of noise. Still not quite shifting crisp enough. Still not quite shifting crisp enough, so I'll put another half turn in there. And, uh, Typically what will happen after some time, after you put a new cable in or if you have a new bike, the shifter cable will actually stretch. And so you need to tighten the barrel adjuster up. So turn it counterclockwise in order to uh, get that stretch back out of the cable or make up for that stretch that's put back in the cable. And that will get the derailleur guide pulley aligned across the cogs on the cassette and your shifting will become much crisper at that point. So even though I was doing this off of the bike and on the stand, I do recommend actually doing this fine tune adjustment while you're riding the bike. And as the bike is under load, as you sit on it, the drivetrain is under load and is being tensed as well. And so the characteristics of the shifter and the derailleur are just a little bit different at that point. So you can certainly dial it in on the stand, but I would say make those micro adjustments that you're actually on the bike. So that'll do it for this video. I hope this information will help you understand the basic operation of the shifter and the derailleur together as a pair and how you shift through the gears. And then also how you use that barrel adjuster on the shift selector in order to make those fine tune and micro adjustments you need to make your mountain bike drivetrain shift smoother. So until next time, you know what to do. Skill up and ride, Ran up and go.